however, to the top of the list, and we start this afternoon with the brollies. Rainbows climb, clouds drift by, brollies fly through a magic sky. Is this real? Are they dreams? Nothing appears to be what it seems. Then far away I can hear a voice in the weather house call out to me. Mr. Brolly, it's time for the rain. was trying to go to sleep. But no sooner had he closed his eyes than he opened them again. Tucked up beside Harry in bed were his toys, Elephant and Hippo. Snake, as always, lay on the rug by the door, and Bird was perched on the chest of drawers. Harry stared down at his patchwork quilt. It was different from other quilts. Instead of flowery scraps of material, it was made of little embroidered pictures of rainbows, stars and planets, clouds and great flashes of lightning in a dark and stormy sky. It had been made a long, long time ago. On the wall hung Harry's weather house. If the day was going to be fine and sunny, Mrs. Brolly came to her door. If the day was going to be wet and cloudy, Mr. Brolly came out. But of course, they never came out together, for it is impossible for a day to be both wet and dry at the same time. But what would happen if they both came out together? wondered Harry, and he sat up and stared at the weather house. As he stared, the doors seemed to grow larger, his bed grew smaller, and he found himself at the entrance of the weather house. A light was shining from the door, through which Harry could see Mr. Brolly no longer fixed to his wooden stand, but moving freely about the room. Thunder and lightning and heavy showers, followed by fog. Yes, fog. I haven't done fog for a long time. Then he turned, saw Harry, and raised his hat. Good evening, my boy, he said. What do you say to fog, eh? Nice, misty, murky, and mysterious fog. And he handed Harry a card, on which was printed the words, Mr. Brolly, weatherman. Storms made to order. Who would want to order a storm? said Harry. No one, said Mr. Brolly, which is a pity, because I do love a good storm. Just think of it. Cracks of thunder, flashes of lightning. Are you sure you wouldn't like a storm? Just a small one? But before Harry could answer, Mrs. Brolly came hurrying across the room and whisked Harry away to her bright and sunny kitchen. She sat down, smiled at Harry, and delved into her bag, and brought out a patchwork quilt, just like the one on Harry's bed. Fog and rain, wind and woe, that's all he ever thinks about, she said. Humming softly to herself, she began to stitch. From behind the kitchen door came the voice of Mr. Brolly. Well, if I can't have a storm, I'll have fog. Misty, murky, mysterious fog. And from under the door, they began to creep little wisps and curls of fog. Mrs. Brolly didn't seem to notice and just stitched away at her quilt. Then the wisps became billows. Mrs. Brolly, look! shouted Harry. Mrs. Brolly looked up, saw the fog, and delving once more into her bag, she brought out two umbrellas with duck's head handles. The green eye of the duck on Harry's umbrella winked at him, and for a moment he thought he heard a soft quack, quack. But before he could examine this delightful object, Mrs. Brolly hurried him out into a garden 
which was full of sunflowers and where rainbows arched across the sky. What a beautiful garden! I didn't know you could have more than one rainbow, said Harry. And he and Mrs. Prolly hurried down the path. Of course you can have more than one rainbow, said Mrs. Prolly. You can have as many rainbows as you wish. People just think that there can only be one. Behind them, the fog was pouring from the kitchen door, hiding the garden from sight. It curled itself round their feet as they went, and then rose to Harry's knees. Mrs. Brolly, said Harry, but again she seemed quite unconcerned. Mr. Brolly thinks he makes the rainbows with his rain, she said, but of course I make it with my sunshine. She opened her umbrella and rose some feet into the air above Harry's head. Quick, quick, open your umbrella, she shouted. So Harry opened his umbrella and floated up to Mrs. Brolly's side. The fog swirled up around them, and Harry was a little alarmed. But Mrs. Brolly reached out and took his hand, and together they soared through the sky with some speed, clearing the bank of fog which rolled after them. Mr. Brolly and his fog, I'll show him sunshine, the like of which he's never seen before said Mrs. Brolly. Umbrellas don't fly, said Harry. Magic umbrellas fly, said Mrs. Brolly. I didn't know there were any magic umbrellas, said Harry. There are only three in the whole wide world, said Mrs. Brolly. Yours and mine and Mr. Brolly's. Only three? How lucky he was, thought Harry, to be the only child with a magic umbrella. With a magic umbrella, he could go anywhere. Where are we going, Mrs. Brolly? he said. Anywhere and everywhere, said Mrs. Brolly. And for the moment, her voice was soft and dreamy. We're the Brollies, she said. The Brollies make the weather, and there's weather all over the whole wide world. <laughs>